come from Malaysia. Um, I've born out and bred in Malaysia. I'm Tamil by um, descent, and I've been in New Zealand about 20 years now. Yeah, over 20 years. Um, yeah, and I became a Christian when I came to New Zealand 20 years ago. My name is Elaine, and um, I'm Rawi's wife, and uh, I uh, came from Malaysia too, and uh, I was born in Malaysia. My dad is from China, so he, he came to Malaysia when he was 16 and married my mum, and, and then I've been in Malaysia for all my life. And yeah, we came to uh, New Zealand 20 years ago, Ravi and myself. Before becoming a Christian, I was, well, I was young, I was brought up with a Hindu faith. My grandmother was a very strong Hindu and she had a, a very strong influence in my life. She was very devoted and she often would pray and she would uh, influence me as a result in believing in the Hindu faith. I used to go to temple and do all these religious rites and things like that. And I also, when I became a teenager, I started to explore other religious beliefs. I wanted to see if there was actually a God. And I, I went to different religious um, sites and try to find the meaning of life, the purpose, if there is a God and things like that. Yes, but, but by faith I was still a very strong Hindu. Yes, that, that's what I came from before. As for me, I just uh, follow my parents. As uh, we were young, we, they, they prayed to um, uh, uh, this, uh, what is it called? Ancestor. Ancestor. Yeah, they pray to Ancestor. It's, uh, it's their tradition. And so we used to, um, as children, we just used to follow what our parents did. And we we, we pray and we we, make, uh, we we would buy a lot of uh, food and for sacrifice and, and things to, to the Ancestor. There's, uh, and I, I just follow and, and do that. And... And I, I felt that that, that, that is quite um, meaningless doing all that. It's sort of like a, um, a thing that we have to do, but uh, it's, just no, it's just not meaningful and it's just emptiness and in doing all that. It's quite interesting because at that time I was not a Christian and uh, I just wanted to have a good time, you know. I was in my early, early 20s and just into meeting new people, meeting girls and things like that. So a friend of mine told me he was going down to work to Singapore. I come from Kuala Lumpur. And he was going down to work to Singapore. He was going to an uh, immigration department to renew his passport. And he said, why don't you come with me? And I knew a couple of girls who used work there, who I've met before. And I thought, hey, that'd be a good idea to catch up, you know. We'll go and see if I can meet some new people. And it just happened. I was there. And Elaine also had come with the mum to uh, her mum wanted to renew her passport and she was just sitting in the front aisle and I was sitting in the back and uh, I started to initiate a conversation and we became friends and uh, since she was also in the advertising industry at that time I was doing a bit of advertising we exchanged cards and from then on our relationship developed. Mm. Uh, we call it a little person in New Zealand so I uh, as a little person, and as uh, when I was growing up, it's quite uh, difficult because of my height. I find it, um, uh, I I find it a bit hard because uh, I I've seen all my friends growing up, and uh, sometimes I wonder because uh, I wonder why that God made me different, and I I couldn't figure out, but uh, I just accept wh who I. Who I am at the time during my primary school, uh, uh, because I was so different height with um, my other cho uh, my uh, other uh, classmates. We when f after school, I used to wait for my my parents to come and pick me up from school. So while when I used to wait outside the the school compound. There will be lots of children surrounding me, which is I hate. I really hated that. And they will surround me and I, I would be like, oh, crowded with lots of children. And I was so little and I was looking up. It's like a big giant, you know, like a group of people looking down on you. And I was so afraid and I used to cry and I used to get so upset, you know. Oh, no, why? Why God 
uh, make me so different that uh, people want to look at me like that. So when as growing up, I got lots of questions in my life. But going through to teenage life was a bit um, hard when you see all your friends, you know, doing things that you couldn't do, and um, you, you know they eventually they you know they they would uh, find find friendship with boys and and uh, you know I've I've got lots of friends and boys friends but they they don't seem to uh, find a favor or interest in me so I only have a few friends that that's quite close to me and um, that uh, we I just have to cope you know lots of things in life that I have to I have to slowly cope and uh, and uh, through life I, I really learn a lot uh, when I seen Elaine the first time I saw her I, I only saw the back of her and I initiated a discussion with her. But when she got down and she left and she, I realized she was a little person. But it didn't really matter to me. Well, it sort of it did, but then I thought, you know, everybody is an uh, individual person you should respect. And that's how we de develop our relationship. Um, and you know, coming to my parents, now that was a difficult thing because <laughs> being a, a Tamil and a Hindu tradition, uh, it's very important that we obey our parents and uh, we get our blessings before we get married and obviously they would want to get uh, somebody married to the same race and same religion and etc etc. So it was quite difficult when I told my mom uh, when she came to know of our relationship she was totally against that. Uh, she was no way she would compromise, no way she would allow us to get married. So that was a difficult position. On one hand we wanted to get married on the other hand, I respected my mom and we have our family tradition of honor and respect, which is very important to us. So I, um, my dad was alright, he was quite open-minded, but my mom was totally against, which is very difficult because I was also the eldest son in the family, so I had to show a good example. Um, so we sort of worked a way out of it. I told my mom, I'm going to leave Elaine, I'm going to start a new life, and go to New Zealand far away from her so you don't have to worry. It was not the truth of course. I was not a Christian at that, at that time as well. Mm. So that's what I did. Um, I managed to get some funds and uh, I took off from KL. At, uh, let Elaine go off to Singapore first, a couple of hours before, met her in Singapore and both of us came to New Zealand without my parents knowing it at that time. Mm. Yeah. Mm. A few years down, as I came to New Zealand, uh, a year or two later, and I wrote her and told her that I was with Elaine and that we had got married. Mm. She was, um, took a couple of years to accept that, but at this, uh, today now. she does accept it and she, uh, yeah. we have our blessing from her. As for, as for me, as for my part, we, after I met uh, Ra Ravi, we became friends and um, we, we get along quite well and uh, we've, and I find that um, that um, you know we we still have a lack of something in our life, even though you know uh, Ralph is really nice to me and uh, she he's really kind person, you know. But um, and we we sort of like want to get married at that stage, like as Ravi said, um, mom um, his mom was um, against our marriage, and and somehow we. Somehow we know that we, we are meant for each other. So we and for my family they they are okay. My like my dad was saying that as long as uh, you know you're happy and uh, and and uh, Ravi is a good person and he would look after me. So we so we decided to to come to New Zealand with my parents' approval, but with without uh, Ravi's uh, parents' approval. So we but we came anyway. And um, after we came here, that's how we uh, we we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. That uh, really changed our life. When I when I was at um, college in Malaysia, I used to have a friend called Joseph. Joseph was a little guy. He was from the lowest community Tamil, but he was a uh, one look at him and you could say he was a lower caste Hindu. He had thick hair, curly hair, black jet black skin, rough looking, he was 
unsportsman, he, he couldn't walk properly, he was not good in studies, but there's always something different about him. He used to come and tell me about Jesus, and that really bothered me. And I thought, how can he be so sure of what Christ? Um, and that was a conviction in my heart, but I was so against Jesus at that time, as a young person, and I completely rejected him, but he always came and told me about Jesus. Also, the important thing was, his life was different from my life. Even though I was a Hindu and I tried to follow the Hindu scriptures, I could not have the clean life and the uh, confidence and the faith and the changed life that Joseph had. I remember quite often I used to go and bully him. I used to sneak up behind him, put my arm around him, choke him and I said, Joseph, have you had a look at yourself in the mirror lately? Look at the color of your skin. It's the same color as your hair. It is jet black. Why do you have a white man's name? And he used to tell me, Jesus Christ is the true and living God. He is the God of all people. He is not God of the white man alone. He is the God of all people. And he was so confident. And he lived a life that was clean and holy. And his life was a conviction to me. But I still did not accept. Anyway, I was looking at the same time for a purpose and a meaning of life. So I used to go to the temple. And in a Hindu religion, there's so many gods. You can have the goddess of money. A god who sits on the lotus flower with money coming out from his hands, her hands. You can worship them. You can have a goddess of education or you can have the goddess of love. And for me, the god that I choose was the god Krishna. He was a playboy god. He had many uh, lovers beside. I thought, hey, that suits me. I want to be a playboy. And, but even then, uh, even praying to Krishna, I, I used to uh, get um, presence of evil spirits. In the night time, I'll feel oppressed and things like that. And I was not sure. And my God couldn't help me. Krishna couldn't help me. So I went to the mosque and I said, um, I had a good friend. He was the best friend of mine. He was Muslim. He used to pray five times a day. So I used to go and stay with him. And he used to take me to the mosque. In Malaysia, we have this biggest mosque in Southeast Asia. Beautiful mosque built by the Italians. And I used to go there and I'll say, Allah, are you the true God? Show me Allah. If you are the true and living God, I will follow you, I'll give you my life. And there was just dead silence. Allah didn't talk to me, mm -hmm. and I continued, and I seeked Him, and there was just dead silence, there's emptiness. Mm -hmm. So I thought, oh, well, I'll go to the Roman Catholic Church. I used to go to the Roman Catholic Church, and when I went there, I saw these images of Mary, images of Jesus. Hey, this is just like Hinduism. They, they make God in stone, and they worship. And I prayed to Mary, but she didn't answer. I felt the same emptiness in the Roman Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. There was no relationship. There was no... Uh, uh, I could not uh, understand or get to know God. So I went to the Chinese God, the Buddhist temple. I went to the Chinese ancestor worship. I went searching, looking for hope. And I never found that hope. Mm -hmm. So when I came to New Zealand and I said to God, I said, whoever you are God, I used to pray God of Jesus or God of... Um, Krishna, or God of Allah, whoever you got, the unknown God, I pray to you, I know there's got to be a God. When I see the wonder and the mm. amazement of the world, I know there's a plan and a purpose. So whoever you are God, you bring me and show yourself to me. That's what I used to pray when I came to New Zealand. And God help us to find that a person will lead us to Him in Queen Street about 20, 21, 22 years ago. I was exposed a bit uh, while I was in school a bit of uh, about Christianity but but then sort of like I'm not a believer I just I just sort of like know there is a Jesus Christ at that time but after when I met Ravi I we used to hang out a lot and uh, go out a lot and uh, and he used to take me to those um, uh, Hindu temple and uh, we used to go to Chinese temple and uh, we even attend church service so and and when I see um, Ra Ravi believing in all gods, I, I sort of like believe in what he believes. So we, we were sort of like go hunting for religion, uh, together, and then when, and we were visit, you know, church uh, or temple festival. We we used to, you know, we, we just used to just join the group and 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 go and do all that sort of things, you know, and then when um, when we arrive in in New Zealand. When we arrived in New Zealand, we, I sort of like um, uh, so feeling so insecure because uh, we 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 came and we we don't have much and uh, 
and times are running out and uh, Ravi, Ravi is searching for a job and I'm looking for a, a job or, or something like that. We find some sort of security. There's no peace in my heart. I couldn't find peace. And uh, we used to um, just rent a, a, a room, a flat, a, not flat, flat with somebody from uh, somebody else and uh, we just have a, a little room as uh, uh, just to stay and um, and um, and Ravi used to be she, he's really a, a really staunch uh, uh, person and he he's really determined and he he, pr he pray a lot but he he's, he was praying to um, his Hindu God and um, he used to chant a lot he used to speak a little bits and he, he will walk around the room and he was go chanting and going round and round the room and and I was uh, like uh, sitting in the corner there and looking at him and I think oh this is all emptiness and uh, where are we going what are we searching you know so and all of a sudden I just make a, a very simple prayer because we, because Ravi used to tell me that we just pray we just pray that god god will help us you know i say what god which god and he say oh we just pray you we just pray all the gods are the same he said we all the gods are the same hindu god uh, or the buddhist god the allah god or the christian god we are all praying to one god and i used to believe that so but then i say okay but I, in deep in my heart, I believe in Jesus Christ because I know and I heard about Jesus before when I was at school and I remember that. So I sat there and I prayed and I said to, I said to Jesus, I prayed to Jesus. I said, Oh Lord Jesus, I said, um, you know, I, I, I'm just really feeling so uncomfortable and I got no peace and I see what my husband is doing and he, he's just... Uh, is he praying to you? Is he praying to the right God? He say he's praying to one God, and we are praying to you. If it's, if it's, if it's Lord, if it's not true, can you please show him? I just did a simple prayer. I say in Jesus' name, God, you know you 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 help him. You help him to find find you. If if he's not praying to the right God, please show him. So I did the very simple prayer. So and um, very soon after that. After that, we and then we went to uh, uh, to town at Queen Street one night, and we have this uh, Friday night uh, ch uh, witnessing. Ch there's a group of people that used to uh, sing in Queen Street, and um, I was passing by there, and I I hear some really nice singing, uh, you know, not far from where we were. So I I say, oh hey, Ravi, I'm going to go and see what's happening what's going on there so i i went and, and i stood there and amazingly just just stood there and, and listened to the words and the songs of the words and that really drove my heart and and i i just stood there for a long time to just listen to their singing and uh, while i was standing there listening there's uh, there's a there's a man came to approach me he was from the church same same group of uh, people so he came and he he invited me to to a to a gospel movie um on sunday night so so i met him on friday night and then he said oh there's a there's a movie there's a gospel movie on a sunday night why don't you come so i was uh, yeah i so i i accepted the invitation and uh, and we and and then on that Sunday we we went uh, we went to church to to see that movie. When we went down Queen Street because we didn't have anything much to do, and today we'll just walk down Queen Street. Queen Street is the main and street in Auckland, so there's a lot of activity on Friday night. And we I saw this group of young people singing and um, you know singing godly songs, Christian songs, and Elaine was really attracted to it, so she stood there and watched. And I saw an elderly man come and approach Elaine and talk to her and was very kind to her and invited her to church. And also he did an important thing. He kissed her goodbye. He kissed her on the cheek goodbye. And I was very cautious, uh, you know, being very protective of Elaine. I said, who are is this elderly man kissing my wife and inviting her to church? And I said, Elaine, if you are going to church, I will have to come to church to keep an eye on this man. <laughs> I'm not sure about this man. Amazing thing is this man was 
he is from Northern Ireland, he's been here many years, but he's got a very strong accent. Even to this day, if you listen to him, you have to listen to him twice to understand what he says. But at that night, we somehow understood what he said. So anyway, he came on a Sunday night and he came with his friend, brought his van, picked us up and he went. And that night we saw the movie. Uh, it was a movie about a man called Louis Palau, a South American missionary who had come to New Zealand many years ago, I think in the 1970s. It was, he brought a message. And it was very, I can't exactly remember what it is, but it was related, practical examples. It was impressive. And after that, uh, pa well, Pastor Samoan, Pastor, he minister and he said, if you want to know you, you, to go to heaven, if you want to go to heaven, receive Jesus. Repent and say sorry for your sins. And he asked Jesus to come in and you can know for sure you are going to heaven. It is a free gift of God. God gives this as a free gift. And as a gift, it's up to you to receive it. Gifts have to be received to taken. So I said, oh, free gift to go to heaven? Hey man, I'm not going to sit down and waste this opportunity. Yes, I want to do that. I want to accept Christ. If it's free, it's not costing me anything. And where, where are you going to get anything free? Nobody gives you anything for free. Um, just in case Krishna or Allah or Mary is not going to make me a way to heaven, I want this Jesus who's going to give me a heaven. It's free up top. So I said, yes, I will accept. I went forward in the uh, crusade and I said the sinner's prayer and they gave me some tracks and life went on. At that stage nothing much had still happened, I mean, uh, but I accepted, I said sorry to the Lord for my sin and I asked him to come in my life. And a few days later, um, the tracks they had given me, one of that was said, um, for God so loved the world that whoever believed in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And I used to think, what is that? I can still remember, I was taking the bus, the yellow bus back then, from, uh, from Avondale, from uh, Mount Oscar to town. I was sitting in the bus and I was reading this track. For God so loved the world that He gave His only Son. What does that mean? What are they trying to say? My counselor had given this track. He said, read it over and over and then you'll get it. And then suddenly like a bang, I opened my eyes and I got it. God gave His Son to die for all my sins. That's the only way. In Hindu, you have to do good works to earn, to do good karma. The problem is you are born with a debt. You already got an account deficit. You already got all these sins and we cannot do enough good works to earn. So I was caught in the cycle. But when Jesus came, He died at the cross and He paid for all my sins. He made me clean. I, at that moment, I realized it like a bang. All my sins and burdens just lifted up. I was just feel the cleanness and the, and the freedom I had. It just came into my heart. I could jump and I could touch the sky. I, this is such an amazing feeling. I had never felt that in my meditation. I never felt that with going through a Swami and initiating me. Nothing like that. But Jesus did that for me. That cleanness, that freedom came from Him. And He opened my spiritual eyes. I could understand the words of the Bible. Finally, that's what happened. That's what changed me. Jesus is for real. It's amazing. I mean, when you become a Christian, you know, you, you feel the newness. I can remember uh, weeks after that, uh, later, I was just driving in my car and God would, the presence of overwhelming peace and love filling me. And I just stopped in my car and I just prayed, thank you, Lord. God was touching me with His Spirit. Yeah. It's it just overwhelming. It's, it's beyond description sometimes. The peace and the love that's poured into your soul, you know. When I became a Christian, it doesn't mean to say your life is going to be easy, everything's all right. But you know, before I was a Christian, it was like standing on a sinking sand, you know. When you have problems, when you have challenges, you just feel you're sinking. You've got nowhere to hold. You call out to God, but God doesn't answer you. When you become a Christian, it life completely changes. You are standing on a solid rock. You've got a foundation. Problems do come, trials do come, but you call out to God and He is there. You will feel His peace and He will be with you as you go through those difficulties. And at times, He will make things disappear. At times, He will allow you to go through. But the best part is, He is there and you got His peace. I remember many times in my work even, uh, and I've, I work in the computer industry, and at times you are in a, a bit of a major problem, you've got to fix, and you've tried everything, you can't fix it. And I just say, God, you just got to help me. And He has helped me many times. That's amazing. It's a wonderful God. 
I remember the time, uh, even when our children, when we had got married, um, we wanted to have children, it had been about a few years, about five years, I think it was. Mm. We couldn't conceive, uh, Elaine couldn't conceive, and we brought it before the Lord, mm. and we prayed, and soon enough, Elaine conceived, and we have our first child, Sarah. Mm. You know, God makes all things possible. Mm. He is a wonderful God, mm. and, and we can, we are able to bring things to Him, and you know, He's our solid foundation, our strength. Um, the first night that uh, the night that the Ravi um, went went forward to accept Jesus Christ as his savior, I went forward too. So when I so I saw Ravi going forward, and I, I was really touched in my heart too that night. So I I went forward and I said, God, I you are the true and living God. I I want to believe in you, and I and I and I ask Jesus to come come into my heart and become my I my personal savior so and and since then i can felt i really feel the peace and i know that my future is in his hand i know that god say the peace that passes all understanding that is in me is in my heart that i even and even to today you know when i and i struggle with things and i i just hang on to god's word i hang on to what that he his promises in the bible sometimes even now i, I find difficult and in my in my with my problems and and because of my my body my structure i i get i get pains in in my back so but i claim that god god has he has healed me god will you know will strengthen me he was he, he will strengthen me and he has done that and i and i believe that he he's doing that and and he will do it for you and where whoever you are you know just keep trusting him and 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 ask him, you know, to be your your savior. Ask him to come into your life and and help you in in all that you do. Either you're for Christ or against Christ. There's, there's no two ways about it. The scriptures say, and uh, when you believe in him and you ask him to come in your life, you've got nothing to lose, but you got all the wonderful blessings of being into the family of God. And the only way you will know is. To believe and to ask Him to come in, you have nothing to lose at all. This wonderful richness of God. Um, tell me, which other God has sent His own Son to die at the cross? Which other person is Allah or Krishna, anybody, anybody else? Yeah? Has anybody ever died for you? God showed His love by dying at the cross for you. He was serious. He meant business. He kept the most precious. Thing that he had his own life, its own son he gave up so that he can redeem he means business and the only way that you will know is to invite him into your lives in Romans 8 um, 28 that says and we know all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose you know when we came to New Zealand we are called for a purpose we we know that God has called us to a purpose you know. and Ravi and myself we are serving the Lord now we we are involved with uh, with some a group of Chinese uh, uh, youth group young people that comes from overseas and and we help them to and to know to know Jesus and we get together with them and, and we want to serve Jesus and to tell to tell people about God you know because we know that God has a, has a purpose for us he just don't he, he's not going to leave us. He, he's, he's done. He started a good work in our life, and he, he was he will accomplish it. And I believe too, like when uh, when Ravi was saying that how we we couldn't have a child too myself, you know, it's hard for me to to have children. As you can see the video today, um, my two children playing music, and and they are you know they are they are lovely kids. They are. They are from God. God gave me two lovely girls, and and I can remember, and I was so, I I I was I was so you know wanting to have a child, and I used to just sit in my room and really pray, and I and I say God, you know, I I really desire this is this is what I desire. I really want to 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 have children of my own. And I really pray. I got into. I got on my knee, and I and I really, you know, really seek God. And I say, pray to God, and I say, God, you know, 
God, please, you know, we, this is my heart desire. Give me my heart desire to have a, a child. And, and not long after that, you know, we wait, 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 we waited. And, um, and then we, we and, then, and Sarah was born. And then after, after two years, uh, Shivani, and uh, God gave me another child, another, another lovely daughter, Shivani. And um, and life um, move on and um, and I find that as a Christian, when we face d difficulty, it's very important that uh, we not we, we do not uh, use our own mind and use our own way, and um, to 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 try to solve the problem. We seek God and we say God, you know. The Bible says Jesus is the only way to heaven, and my hope is based on Jesus and the Word of God. And I know it's a sure word. Why? I, how I know it's a sure word? Because since I've become a Christian, I've learned to trust and depend on the word. And through my trials and challenges, I've turned to God's word. And I found it to be true. It has never let me down. And so I know I have the hope of a good future in heaven with Him, based on His word. That is the hope that you have when you become a Christian. We shall read this... Um the salvation plan that Jesus has got for us. He says that, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. You know, And God says in John 10, 10 to says, I came that, that they might have life and they might have life abundantly, that it might be full and meaningful, that your life will be full of meaning. And um, it's also say, it also says that um, for all have sinned and fall short of glory of God, and um, we are we are sinner and the, we we will do wrong things by accident and thing. That is how we fall short of glory of God, and uh, for the wages of sin is death. You know, for if we do anything wrong because we we are not perfect. You know, for the for the wages of sin is dead. And, but for God, He demonst demonstrates His own love towards us. And in that we are wild sinner. Christ died for, for us. You know, Christ died for our sin. He was buried. He was raised on the third day according to the, to the scripture. And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. So God has a bridge, the the gulf between that separate us from God by sending His Son, by sending His Son Jesus Christ to die on the cross for our place to pay the penalty of our sin. So and and we must do, we must receive Christ, but as as many as received Him, to them He received the right to become children of God. Even to those who believe on his name, this is in John first twelve, and it says in Revelation uh, three to, uh, twenty, it says, "Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any one hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him." So receiving Christ involves um, turning from self and to God and trusting Christ to come into your life to forgive our sin and to make us the kind of person He wants us to be. So, we receive Christ by faith as an act of the will. If you want to receive Christ in your life now, we really want you to do a, a, a prayer with us. Yeah, as, as Elaine mentioned, uh, the scriptures, Behold, I stand at the door and knock in your heart and just open up your heart to Him and by faith say, Lord Jesus, Come into my heart. I believe you. You are Lord and Savior. Forgive me for all my sins. Forgive me for all the wrongs I've done. Forgive me for not believing you in the past. But now I believe you. I want you to be Lord in my life. Come in my heart and be the Lord and King in my life. And you say a simple prayer like that. By faith, you ask Him into your life and yes. repent of all the things you have done. Is this the desire of your heart today? You pray and you ask Him in jihad. As simple as that. And you will become a new person in Christ. 
find a good place of fellowship, a church where you can attend and learn God's word and grow in His word. Yeah, and and you just say, you know, Lord Jesus, you know, come into my heart today, come and live in in me, and please, Lord, you know, forgive all my sin, and I believe that you have died on the cross for my sin, and I receive you as my personal savior, and it's just as simple as that, and ask God to forgive you, and when you pray, you just say, you know, God. I just I just trust in you and I pray all this in Jesus name you just call upon Jesus you say Jesus you come into my life today and I want to receive you as my personal Savior and he will do that for you and he has done that for us for men for more than 20 years and he will do that for you you know just keep trusting in God yes believe that he died for you and for me all the sins of the world he died at the cross for your sin and ask Him into your life and walk with Him, read the Bible and pray and have a daily fellowship with Him. He will become real to you. Sausages that cut in half. Turn on the soup. I'm lucky, hey.
I learned to drive, first of all, I get my car, pedal extension first, and make the extension, and then Ravi, my husband, uh, teach me how to drive. So we're having lots of, lots of uh, lessons. So we, and then finally I know how to drive. So I have been driving for more than 20 years now, since I live in New Zealand. every morning beautiful legs <laughs> How old are you? I'm 14. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> She's so What's your name? Sarah. How old are you? I'm six, 17. You have some food, breakfast? Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you, Lord, for today. We thank you, Lord, for your son especially. Thank you that we can have this food and share with Matthew as well. We do pray you bless this food and bless each and every person here. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> okay. All right. Help yourselves. <laughs> Why did you paint them different colors? For that one? Um, no, for that one. Because I liked it. <laughs> yeah. 
What about your fingers? They're not really that interesting. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the little girls painted these ones. <laughs> Thank you. 